This is Pocket Watching with JT, the call-in financial talk show focused on helping you get your money right. Jason Thornton is a certified financial planner licensed in both tax and investments. Now, this is not personal financial advice. This is JT's real reaction to all your money and business questions. Are you deep in debt, living paycheck to paycheck and looking for a way out? Call Pocket Watching with JT, the financial advisor for the people. Need more? Book your personal consultation with my man JT at pocketwatcher.net. Now, let's go pocket watching. Hey, pocket watchers. Welcome to Pocket Watching with JT. I am certified financial planner, Jason Thornton. That means I am a real financial advisor. I do not just play one on the internet. I want to give a big shout out to the over 118,000 of you who have already hit that subscribe button. I appreciate that. As you make your way into this live stream, make sure you hit that like button, share this content. And if you have not subscribed already, sit back, relax. You may see something that you like. So what are we talking about tonight? Well, tonight on Pocket Watching with JT, we have to have a discussion about Dr. George Frazier. Now, this one was a tough one for me. And I want to make sure you and you know you understand. I, I have no excitement or joy in making this video, but I owe it to you, to pocket watchers. And I'll explain later tonight why I take no joy in doing this show. But we have to have a conversation about the good doctor, because there are allegations that the good doctor has been associated with a Ponzi scheme, a crypto Ponzi scheme. And I said, hold on, hold on. Before we besmirch the name of the good doctor, first you have to understand who this man is. Dr. George Frazier, you can consider him an OG when it comes to the Black financial influencer. He was a Black financial influencer long before social media. This is a man who has dedicated his life to improving the financial condition of the Black community. This is a man that has legit business background. So for those of you who are unaware, you have no idea who this gentleman is. This gentleman is a entrepreneur, an author, and motivational speaker. He has been striving to bring generational wealth to the Black community. Many, and I do mean this, many, many, many of the things that he talks about and promotes, the pocket watcher agrees with. So I'm a little torn here. I, I, I don't understand why someone, one of you pocket watchers, why one of you would email me and say that the good doctor is associated with a crypto. Ponzi scheme. If you've never heard the man speak, well, you're in for a treat. Check this out. In America, you're either excellent or you're invisible. Let me say that again. You're either excellent in this country or you're invisible. I'll focus on excellence and demonstrated excellence must be one of the top priorities for black people for the 21st century. With my own personal philosophies and things that I've been teaching and preaching for 40 years, I have invested my time, talent, and treasure, my wealth, back into the black community to improve the condition of our people. I am a race man. The future of black people, brothers and sisters, in case no one has told you, I'm going to tell you, is not dependent upon how white people treat black people. Forget that BS. 
The future of black people is dependent upon how black people treat black people. How can you not hear that and be motivated? How can you hear that and think that this man would associate himself with something so silly as a crypto Ponzi scheme? Let, let me show you guys something. Let me show you guys something. This man has legit business background, right? Legit business background. That's what he has. Look, this man has been associated with Procter & Gamble, the United Way, and Ford, Ford Motor Company. He isn't some sort of new age social media influencer who's going to drop a gem in a podcast. He's not telling you to buy his uh, mastermind or his course or anything like that. This man's a legit author. He has a legit business background. So how do we end up here? How do we end up here? The questions that was swirling around my mind, then I got to show you guys this. This is why I'm so torn. Not only is this man an OG in the community, this man is an honorary member of the greatest fraternity in the history of the world, in my opinion, my humble opinion, Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. So listen, I say this very humbly. Dr. Frazier. What's going on? Why would someone send me an email saying that you're associated with a crypto Ponzi scheme? What the hell is going on? So um, let me show you the video that I was sent. Uh, check this out. To the petty arts. Yes. Old keys will not open new doors. Mm -hmm. You have provided all of us, thousands of us, a new key to a new door. You have saved lives and you did it with dignity. You did it with love, with generosity and humility. You are true leaders. A great leader eliminates fear. You have washed away the fear that so many of us had in this space. You have set the standards by which I believe all other platforms going forward will be judged. Someone else said that in a different way, but I believe that is absolutely true. One of the keys in life for all of us is to have a model, to find a coach, and to find a mentor. You are all three in one. Wow. You are a unicorn. If you don't know it. All right. All right. So let's talk about it. Who were these two people that Dr. Frazier was, man, Dr. Frazier was hyping up these two people? Who are they? What do they do? Well, let me let me show you guys something. Uh, I am not unfamiliar with these two characters. He was giving a big shout out, a show of praise and love to these two people. Husband and wife, Cynthia and Eddie Pettyon, I believe that name is. Cynthia and Eddie. Now, if you are new to Pocket Watching with JT, maybe you are unfamiliar with the business 
that these two people ran. But about a year ago, I believe it was April the 6th, 2023, about a year ago, I did this video about their company. If you never heard of their company, Nova Tech, if you never heard of their company, I want you guys to uh, <laughs> sit back and uh, check this out because Nova Tech sounds very familiar to a bunch of other videos that I've done before. If you don't know what Novatech is, it's a crypto and forex brokerage. I I'm trying to explain. Man, it's a hedge fund. You feel me? So basically, uh, you deposit your money. They trade crypto and forex for you, and you get a weekly return. They uh, they can basically break you off. Like they basically give you a return on your investment every week. You feel me? Uh, average about three percent. This week was like three point seven five. Man, it's a hedge fund. You feel me? Uh, you deposit your money. They trade crypto and forex for you, and you get a weekly return. Uh, average about 3%. Hey, Pocket Watchers. Do you want to lose your money in a Ponzi scheme or a crypto scam? What about a multi-level marketing company? Well, apparently, Novatech is all three. Let's go. This is Pocket Watching with JT. All right, guys, it is story time. Over the past two weeks, I had not one, but two different clients come into my office and talk about Novatech. Let me set the stage. Many of you know that I am a certified financial planner. Part of my job being a financial advisor is working with my clients to help them meet their long-term financial goals. Well, a part of that is making sure that they have an emergency savings fund. That is three to six months of your bill money saved up for an emergency. Something happens in your life, you don't have to go into debt, you don't have to put it on a credit card, you have an emergency savings fund. Well, when the first client talked about Novatech, they said, yeah, JT, I do have an emergency savings fund. I have some money put away in an account that's earning me a good amount of money. I said, hold on. There's a difference between an emergency savings fund and an investment. You should not have your emergency money in an investment. It needs to be in a cash account. Well, they said it's kind of like a cash account. It's with Novatech, and I'm earning 3% get this, 3% a week. And, you know, I laughed and I smiled and I thought to myself, they, there's got to be some misunderstanding here. They don't, they, 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 they got it mixed up. I said, no, no, no. You, you're, you're earning 3% a year, probably. That's probably what you're getting. They said, no, 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 no. I'm earning 3% a week. I can show you on my phone. I earn 3% a week. I said, no, th there's no savings account or money market account that's going to give you 3% a week. There's no investment that you can find that's going to give you 3% a week. They said, nope, I have it right here. And they showed me their phone. And I looked at their returns. I looked them dead in the eyes and I said, this is a scam. Novatech made a lot of claims that I do not believe they can back up. Most of the videos on YouTube hyping Novatech start off with the person saying, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. Well, I am a certified financial planner and here, is a financial tip. Never throw your money into something that you, one, don't understand, and two, if they're offering you a ridiculous amount of return. 3% a week is unrealistic. Now, if I was you and I put money into Novatech, I'd be trying to get the money back as soon as possible. This entire Ponzi-like scheme is going to fall in on itself based on everything that I'm seeing. 
and the government will probably step in at some point and shut it down. All right, so that was about a year ago. That was April the 6th, 2023. Here we are, November. I mean, I'm sorry. Here we are, February, February 2024. Uh, I want to be clear. When I made that video, a lot of the uh, members of Novatech, they weren't too happy with the pocket watcher. Um, some of them went to the comments of that video and they told me how dumb I was and how I didn't understand the business model of Novatech. They explained that 3% a week, while in the regular world of finance, 3% a week, yeah, that's hard. But this is crypto, JT. You don't understand how cryptocurrency works. 3% a week in cryptocurrency is easy. I get 3% a day sometimes on my crypto. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. But 3% a week for everyone who participates in the Novatech platform is virtually impossible. It's a Ponzi scheme. I don't even have to look at the books. I know it's a Ponzi scheme. But they said, no, JT, you don't know what you're talking about. You always try to talk about how you went to school for this and how you're certified. But in reality, we know better than you. Get out of here. I said, okay, I got you. I know where I'm not wanted. But um, funny enough, earlier this year, some news came out about these uh, Novatech people, right? These Novatech people. Uh, apparently, Novatech is getting hit with the class action lawsuit. Claim that it is a 2.3 billion. I said billion would it be, not million. 2.3 billion RICO class action lawsuit in New York. All right. These people, for whatever reason, think that they're smarter than the system. As if they can just make money appear out of the sky. That's not how finance really works. Not only are the actual CEOs and founders of Novatech are facing charges and lawsuits, some of the top promoters of Novatech, you know, the people who join in and they get you to join and they get their downline because it's a multi-level marketing Ponzi scheme, according to the federal government and their indictments, is a multi-level Ponzi scheme. Some of the biggest promoters of this alleged fraud, they are being investigated by the SEC. This is another reason why when I had Brother Ben X here on the show, Pocket Watching with JT, and he was promoting a company that I told him was an illegal company that was selling unregistered securities. I told him this to his face. Still yet to this day, he has not made any videos that he claimed that he would make if the company was shut down. The company was shut down. Um, no video has been produced by the Brother Ben X media conglomerate. And once again, we have another influencer who has no problem making money from the scheme, it looks like, have an issue taking responsibility by bringing in victims into the scheme. But right here, these two individuals, they are. <laughs> they are being investigated by the SEC, and they were merely promoters. They didn't own the company. They promoted, just as Brother Ben X promoted GS Partners. So you got to be careful with the companies you get involved with. Now, you can see at the SEC's website, they are investigating promoters of Novatech. Of no you don't have to own the company. You don't have to be the mastermind. You don't have to be the person on top of the pyramid. You can still find yourself in some legal trouble. So that's that's 
Let's talk about this. If it sounds too good to be true, it most likely is. But maybe I'm missing something. Maybe the pocket watcher is just too old in his ways and he doesn't understand the way that these new platforms work. I don't understand how crypto and multi-level marketing, when they come together, you get generational wealth. Well, let, let, let me say something about the good doctor. He is my brother in my fraternity. I believe he earnestly wants to help our community uh, raise the level of financial literacy and wealth. But you got to know your lane. You got to know your lane. If you are not an expert in a particular thing, take a few steps back. Do not allow yourself to become a tool or a puppet of someone else who ultimately is exposed as a fraud. When you are taking recommendations from these influencers, be they new age influencers or the old heads. Like here, here's the part that, that, that is crazy. You know just as well as I do that the older generations, they have a problem when their iPhone gets a new update, right? Let's just be clear. They have a problem understanding how to update their iPhone, but you're gonna allow them to tell you, go ahead and get involved in a cryptocurrency multi-level marketing company. Do you think for a moment <laughs> that Dr. George Frazier understood what that company was doing? Clearly not, because if he understood what the company was doing, if he understood how 3% a week is impossible, he would be complicit in the fraud. I do not believe the man is complicit in the fraud. I believe the man is complicit in blinding himself to the realities of the business world has moved forward and made advances, and he has not really done the work to study how crypto works in the business model of someone in the crypto industry. Me, pocket watching with JT, I am not an expert in crypto. I will never claim to be an expert in crypto. I will never abdicate for you to invest in a crypto project because I don't know. I'm going to stick in my lane and what I actually studied and what I am a certified expert in. So to Dr. George Frazier, please, you need to speak up and let people know what happened. You are a man of integrity based on what I know. And I think it's important that you explain how this crypto whatever was shut down Many people lost money investing into this company, and many people could have joined that company based on your promotion of it. It does not erase all the good that you've done in the past to admit to making a mistake, an error, joining on to something that you didn't understand. But it is an error if you do not take on the responsibility. Just like I told Brother Ben X that he needs to do, you need to make an open statement that this company you did not understand was a scam and that you're going to do better next time. All right, guys, I want to hear from you. The link is in the chat. I want to hear from you guys. Maybe I missed something. Maybe the pocket watcher is blind to something. I want to hear from you. There's a link in the chat. It's pinned to the top. Hit the link. Call in to the show. All right. I have, I don't know how to pronounce your name. It looks like Albany. Last name Clayton. I'm going to bring you up and then everybody else after that. So let me bring you up and cue you up. Here we go. Uh, Clayton, you're live on the air with Pocket Pocket. Whoa, well, time out, time out. Whatever you're listening to me on, turn that down. If you're using your phone right now, Talk to me straight to the phone, whatever other device you're listening to the show. Go ahead and mute it. I'll cut it off. So I'm going to bring you back. Clayton, after Clayton, I have Maya, I believe. So Clayton, you're live on air. What's going on? Can you hear me? 
Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. Hi. Um, I really like your show. First time being called up to the stage, but I am okay. definitely a listener. Mm -hmm. um, I am always curious about these like affinity scams. I feel like they specifically target black communities. I know I'm not the first person mm -hmm. to raise this, but I do wonder like, you know, what can be done to like, I feel like you talk a lot about like, oh, you're immediately seen as like a hater or you're trying to get somebody locked up and, and stuff like that. And I'm someone who's like, I just don't want y'all to be scammed. If something sounds fishy, like right. with the Manta guy, like sometimes you have to, um, sometimes you, the, the book is the cover, you know what I'm saying? And <laughs> you shouldn't trust everybody. But I do wonder, like, are there any sort of conversations that you feel like have yet to be had that mm -hmm. can make our people, especially those who are especially susceptible to things with like trap in front of them. I was mm -hmm. like trap mortgage lending, trap <laughs> like uh, loan, like you don't, everything doesn't have to be trapped, but I know that makes things feel more accessible to people. Mm -hmm. What can we do to like reach those folks without, um, you know, getting them scammed? Like, how do we not alienate people who aren't as experienced as you or don't listen to these things constantly, but mm -hmm. but need help? You know what I'm saying? I'm curious for your thoughts I, on that. I know exactly what you're saying. And it's not an easy thing to achieve because here's the issue. I'm a big believer that you should not stoop down to the level of someone you're trying to teach when they're in filth. I believe that you should raise them up to your level and clean them up. There is a pretty big section of black finance uh, influencers who believe and they say, well, JT, the reason why they won't listen to you is because you won't meet them where they are. You won't, uh, you know, pull your pants leg up. You won't put the monkey suit on. You won't act like them to make them feel comfortable to then bring them up. But the issue is this. I've seen many of these Black finance influencers over the past three to five years, right? They have been speaking the lingo. They have done everything to try to infuse that hip hop, urban, and we're talking about the negative sides of the hip hop, urban drug culture and infuse. Yeah, definitely. It doesn't seem like you like hate black people or anything. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, I don't see you as a racist. So, right. and, and yeah. try to infuse that with financial literacy. Well, I've seen that and I don't see any results. I don't see the positive results of coming down and say, listen, and that's real, like, like some people may think, oh, JT, this is hyperbole. No, what I'm saying is an actual video. There was a guy that popped up and said, listen, I used to sell bricks on the corner. I'd go out on the corner, I'd chop it up, and I'd give each person a work. I don't have to do that no more. My rental property is my work. And I go from door to door. Like, he, he was trying to translate real estate investing to selling drugs like that that that's to me that's going down a level and trying to say i'm going to pull you up but i haven't seen some mass uh transfer of people who are in you know criminal culture and now they're upstanding citizens all i've seen is people who did petty crimes now they do financial crimes so I think that there needs to be a conversation about what real financial literacy is. You do not stoop down to that level and, oh, yeah. Like the worst thing is when the old guy on the block tries to be cool to relate. Like that, that to me, that, that, that's corny. That's corny. I'd rather you be who you are and you make them raise themselves up to meet you at a level of professionalism, meet you at a level of just a dignified culture so that then they can actually change their behavior. But I think it's one by one. I think it's, you can't go out and save the community. The focus should be, how do I keep my little brother or my little cousin 
from falling for this. Maybe I need to spend some time with them on the weekend and teach them. Listen, man, this is how I keep a budget. Like you're, you're 16, 17 years old. You'll probably be graduating high school soon. You'll have real bills that you need to take care of. Let me show you how I do this and do it one on one. But if we try to make it like a mass movement, I'm, I don't think it's going to be as effective as I would love it to be. But as long as you have clowns out here who say, man, it's OK, we'll turn <laughs> we'll turn financial literacy into like a, a trap strip club and we'll throw monies in there. Oh, well, it's not real money. There's actually coupons to my financial literacy uh, uh, class like. <laughs> I don't see yeah. that actually being that's effective. that's the type of crazy shit that I feel like is I be seeing it happen and I and it always feels mm -hmm. weird. Like I'm a journalist myself and I always appreciate that you like bring up SEC filings and things that are like public knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody is going I, you don't have to FOIA these things, you don't have to do a PRA request, you just gotta Google someone's name. Oh, and yeah, I get first their name. That's it. Easy. And I get like, you know, I'm on the it's like the SEC, the DOJ. Like I get news releases from them all the time. Ponzi scheme this, Ponzi scheme that. And it's mm -hmm. definitely not all black people who do it. I just wrote up a story about people who scammed like mm -hmm. the the Jewish community. Right. It was just running Absolutely. through people's grannies. It happens. And but it like is like I have a vested interest in black people. So that's mm -hmm. why I am more likely to want to like snatch somebody out of those depths. And I'm a definite save the whole world type of <laughs> gal, but I feel like watching your stuff is just like, I really can't, we really can't No, because I mean the, yeah, the, <laughs> the interview with you and Manson just play, it's, it's rent free in my head. I appreciate you doing that. Cause these, I don't know how you don't say the N word more often because <laughs> if there is one thing that these scams are full of, Right. It's um, you know. But anyway, I'm a, I'm a yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me up. Oh, no. hey, I, thank I you really, so much. And, and if you could do me a favor, please email me the article that you did. Email me a uh, pocketwatcherjt at gmail .com. Email me that article because I love to uh to listen to it. Thank you for coming up. All right, we got Maya, we got Henry, and then we got Monk. So let me bring up Maya. Maya, you're live on the air. What's going on? Hi, Pocket Watcher with JT. I watch a lot of your videos, mm -hmm. and um, I'm not sure if you spoke about mm -hmm. this earlier um, in your live, mm -hmm. but I believe that these promoters should have a stake and have to be regulated to invest in these things that they're promoting, mm -hmm. and not just getting paid, because then it'll force them to look, double look at the company and be able to see okay well is this really something i want to put my name behind mm -hmm. or do i think that this is sketchy and i'm not going to do it because now it's my dollars that are on the line no no and, and, and it's real so uh for example dj Khaled and floyd uh mayweather they promoted a uh cryptocurrency bs card or whatever it was and they got fined by the SEC. They didn't own the company. They promoted it. And they got hit with a fine. Two of the promoters of this company, Novatech, they are currently being investigated by the SEC. They were simply promoters. So it, it's already technically a, uh, a, a system for punishment for people who promote these type of scams. I think the ultimate thing that people need to think about is this. What are you willing to risk your reputation for? Are you so in thirst for money that you won't double check something? You will not seek out wise counsel before you do something. If you truly don't understand how crypto works, and probably over 90% of the population does not know how crypto really works. I include myself into that. If you don't know how it works, I can see you still maybe investing in it in your, for yourself, maybe just to give it a little shot. You know, maybe a couple, you know, a, a couple hundred bucks or a thousand bucks if you have an emergency savings fund and all that stuff. Yeah, you could throw something at it. But to go to the next level, to go to the next level and promote it, and then the next level is you're not just promoting it; you are financially rewarded for your promotion. 
every person that you bring into the funnel, every person that you bring in your downline, you earn a commission. For you to step out on that limb without being able to say with any certain certainty, I know how this works, that's insane to me. Like doing it yourself, you might want to dip your toe in and yeah, I'll invest. But the second you start promoting and you have an affiliate link and you're sending it out and you're making money off of it and you have no idea how it works, I'm like, that that's gross negligence. It's gross negligence and having people register, hell, the company itself was not properly registered. So to have the promoters register doesn't, you know, it isn't going to step up anything because the company itself was not a properly registered investment company. So they're not going to tell the promoters to get registered if they're not registered. But it, it, it's a good point. Thank you, uh, Maya, for calling in. All right, we're going to get through these calls. We've got Henry, Monk, and Charles. Let me bring up Henry. Henry, you're live on air. What's going on? Hey, JT, can you hear me? Yes, go right ahead. Uh, all right. So uh, I, I just can't believe that people listen to these clowns, JT. Like, when I was re-watching your Mansa video, the, the last couple of them, mm -hmm. uh, there was something that hit me in his like interview where he was like, wink, wink, uh, get your <laughs> get yourself out of the way of making income, wink, wink. Right. I was like, wait. So, they, is so, you, can win, so you can get food stamps. I, I want to make sure we have context here. He wanted you to get on food stamps. Well, how can I get on food stamps? I make too much money. Get yourself out of making income. Like, what? <laughs> You're telling people to be unemployed to get food stamps? <laughs> Whatever situation they're in already, now you're just saying, hey, you want some food stamps? Just lose your job. Oh, that good paying job you got? Drop it. <laughs> you want that food stamps, don't you? <laughs> what? Why not eat for free? It's like, what are you talking about? And, and, and the thing about this is, for people who don't know, don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about a man who has followers. Like if he was just some weirdo on the street yelling, right? Just just yelling on the street corner, and I was, you know, addressing it. You guys could say, "Well, JT, stop, stop beating up on him. No one's following him. No one's listening to him. Yeah, what he's saying is stupid, but no one's listening." Not only are people listening to this guy, he's making thousands and thousands of dollars, charging them that he's going to teach them how to pay their bills without using real money. The trick is you have to pay him real money to get to class. And he yeah. still has followers. <laughs> he still has followers. That's the, that's the craziest thing. That's all. Uh, thank you, JT. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. We've got uh, Felix Monk. Felix, you're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. I'm here to come out of the closet. <laughs> come out of the closet. I'm a white guy. I'm a white guy and I listen to you all the time. <laughs> I, I got to tell you the truth, man. Uh -huh. There's only three people worth listening to on the internet. Poppyzilla, mm -hmm. Patrick Boyle, and JT Pocket Watchers. Stop it. Stop listening. That's it. That's it, man. Those guys... I absolutely, I'm a fan of that content. For you to put me on a list with CoffeeZilla and Patrick Boyle. That's I it. Tip, I tip my hat to you, sir. Thank you so much. And Thank I you. just, um, I realize you're here to help the black community, but mm -hmm. I am financially literate. Mm -hmm. And you bring up a lot of points that the whole world needs to know about. Mm -hmm. Come on. This <sighs> isn't just. For the black community, you were helpful to everybody. Th thank you, thank you. Just sir. wanted to I let you know, uh, you got a lot to offer for the world, man. Listen, that's that, that, that's a great compliment, sir. Thank you so much. I appreciate you calling in. Uh, thank you, thank you. I can't I can't say anything more to that. My, I tip my hat to you, sir. Thank you so much. All right, let me bring up Charles. Charles, Charles, you're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? JT, what's going on, man? Long time listener, and I always try to support when I can. I, I am one of the people that when I first started listening to you, mm -hmm. I would super chat you mm -hmm. 
mm. without having the the uh, the extra funds to super chat you. I'm just like, oh, man, you super chat. <laughs> but I will say, man, this is not me trying to promote anything. I did take me and my uh, girlfriend. We took your um, your pocket watch, of course, and it's definitely helped me. I can say that a hundred percent. Uh, in the past year that I've been listening to you, I've been approved for credit cards by clean, not cleaning up my credit with, uh, uh, with these scams, but just like pouring into my own profile, pouring into my own savings mm -hmm. and really doing what I got to do. And that it is amazing that when you do what you have to do and you do it the right way, right. the things that you want may take a little bit longer, but you're going to get them any goddamn way. And, and that, I don't got to worry about going to jail, JT. Me, man. <laughs> You'll get there. Like the people who want to cheat. This, this is the part that gets me. When you commit to cheating or cutting corners, you are admitting that you either cannot get it the legitimate way, which means you're a bit of a loser, or you're unwilling to do the work to get it the legitimate way. Which, once again, to me, that puts you in a category of a loser. If you do it the right way, even though it may be a little harder, it may take you a little longer, you'll actually feel accomplishment after you get it. Let, let me give an example. And, 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 and Charles, you're still on the line, uh, but I want to yes, give sir. this example. If you are able to achieve a perfect credit score, 850 credit score, if you're able to achieve that credit score based on lying, like many credit repair people tell you to do, you send off forms to uh, different credit agencies and you claim that you are a victim of identity theft. I'm a victim of identity theft. I wasn't the person who borrowed this money and never paid it back. Someone else borrowed that money and they never paid it back. So you lie. And the lie works. And the next day you have a 850 credit score. What do, do you feel proud of yourself? Like, I, I, I can't understand how that works. Here's the other part. What does that mean? You will then go to, let's say, a car dealership. And that car dealership sees your fake credit score of 850. And they allow you to get the most expensive car on the lot, your dream car. Once again, do you feel like some sort of accomplishment? Because here's the problem. The same bad financial habits that destroyed your credit score, you still have. You did not do the work to improve your financial habits, which in turn would automatically improve your credit score. So while you all of a sudden you may have your dream car or your dream home or whatever it is that you were trying to get on credit, you maintain the bad habits of the person with the 500 credit score or whatever. So you're only going to keep the asset for a few months before those bad habits put you back in the position you were anyway. So what's the point? That's like catfishing a date. You kids, you know, I, I was married long before the app, so I, I don't know about this dating on app stuff. But if you go on Tinder or Grindr or whatever, whatever dating app you use, and you put another person's picture on the profile, and this person is like a fitness model or an IG model or whatever, and all of a sudden you got people flooding your DMs, are you proud of that? How does that make you feel? People are flooding your DMs telling you how beautiful you are, how handsome you are, how bad they want to date you. But the picture is not of you. The profile is made up. That's the same thing you do when you lie to get a good credit score or you cheat to do anything financial. Everything you're getting in the attention is not based on something that you did and you achieved. It's based on a lie. And sooner or later, just like the person catfishing on the dating app, sooner or later, when you meet up with the person, all you're going to see is disappointment in their face because you are not what you project yourself to be. So what's the point? My bad, Charles. I had to go on that mini rant. No, nah, no. Nah. You <laughs> you're good, me. man. I, I like the rants, man, because you always bring up good points. And you are right. And to, you know, to tie it back into all of this, is like there's so many people that, 
you know, your portfolio isn't even ready for you to be dipping into crypto in the first place. And then, you know, you got people coming to you, promising you, uh, like I, I was watching, uh, some, I'll, I'll be honest, I get into the rabbit hole of watching your videos sometimes, right? Even two years old, one years old, but I was watching one video and I think it was, uh, uh, the guy from social proof podcast. And mm. he was like, Oh yeah. You know, if, uh, if I had a way to get, make you a million dollars. And all you have to do is pay me 10000 How many of you guys are going to do it? And it's like one of those just like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> like, you know, like your, your last $10,000, you are going to pay to some guru who this guru makes a million dollars. Let's just say the guru actually makes a million dollars. Right. What in who like why would the guru come to you with nothing? You have nothing to offer except for the skin on your bones with that last 10k. Right. And if this guy really makes a million, that your 10k is a drop in the bucket for him. Why? <laughs> why do you think you are the person? You know, like it, it never makes sense. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Yeah. He had like a commercial for, I think for his, his, he's got a course or something like that. And he gave that example is like, if you had your last $10,000 and I had a way to teach you how to make a billion dollars, would you get, it's like, how is that even a realistic hypothetical situation? Like, how is that even something that a person would, you're acting as if the million dollars is guaranteed. The million dollars is not guaranteed. If the million dollars was guaranteed, you would be more popular than the lottery. Like, what the hell is he talking about? Once right. again, it's those it's those high pressure sales tactics that you learn in multi level marketing. Because don't forget, he's a multi level marketer. He comes from the world of multi level marketing, and multi level marketers are notorious for lying. They're notorious for uh, trying to persuade you with no real facts or information, only emotion. But those type of propositions are BS. If you're down to your last X and I can guarantee you this, will you do that? Well, there's no guarantees in life because if there was a guarantee in life that I would already be aware that this situation is going on. I right? mean, I'm telling you, JT, and then they also come around with this, well, this is how the billionaires do it. This is how the millionaires been doing it. Why aren't you doing it? No, man. Like, I, I, I had to get away from all of that. It, it never makes any sense. There's no tangible person that they could ever show that's mm -hmm. actually doing it the way they said, oh, yeah, this is how... I'm, like, even the stuff with uh, Brother Ben Next, and I think that's another great point of... You know, uh, as good as uh, everybody wants to say Ben X is, he also comes from the multi-level marketing uh, um, oh. paradigm. And, you know, he, he's a good guy. I, I see a good guy in his heart. But, yeah. I mean, you know, like, you can't get wrapped up in that stuff. That does bring a bad uh, uh, hit to your name. And then mm -hmm. when you do stuff like GX Partners and all of these things that, yeah, you know, when you I, if I get three more people in and, oh, comment, comment, win on my profile page right. to get to the next level. Comment, everybody comment. Right. Of like, course you're going to comment. DM me generational wealth. DM, DM me exactly. DM me generational wealth and I'll give you my step-by-step -step blueprint. And yeah, steps one to 12, they're, they're free. But step 13, the most important step, yeah, you got to pay a little bit extra for that one. Like all of this stuff is all, you know, like they, they recycle and recycle. And what I'm noticing before I get off, I'll let mm -hmm. you go. But what I'm noticing is a lot of these guys, they all know each other. I'm noticing that. They all are they the all same They all hang circle. in the same circle. Their wives hang out together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's like, that's not a coincidence. Exactly. Because the question is, who else would they hang around? It's a small circle. You have to be able to hang around other people who are doing that same grift because otherwise it's like they're in on it, right? It's like it's almost like when magicians hang out with each other, right? Or even like old school wrestlers. Like before everyone and it was up front that professional wrestling is um, scripted, right? You never say it's fake because wrestling is not fake. It's, it's scripted. But before the public was upfront and aware that professional wrestling was scripted. They only hung out with each other. They only talked the business to each other because if you, 
if you tell other people outside of the circle, the show loses its magic. And it's the same thing in my mind with these grifters. If these grift grifters actually was able to befriend other people, like real business people, real business people would tell them they're grifting. Real business people would explain their situation, what they're doing is wrong, or they would not want to be associated with them. They have to associate with each other because they teach each other the insides of the whole grift and they trade email lists. That's how you got a person. Like I literally, this is a great point. And, and, and Charles, thanks for uh, calling in. I literally had a phone call either today or the earlier uh, this week where it was a free consultation and the person told me that they did not get in one online financial literacy community. They were in multiple communities. They were in BWO. They were in the trucking guru. They were, they, I mean, they did a bunch of the, they were in recession proof. Him behind. They did a bunch of different programs and, you know, they made a little money, but probably spent more money than they made in all those programs. And, you know, that's why they were reaching out and they're doing much better now, but you know, what Charles said really reminded me those people do hang out with each other. And there's a good chance that the reason why people bounce from one group to the next is that after, and Eli, from what happened to Common Sense, he, he, he mentioned this to me as well. After you use up your email list and you sold these people everything that you can sell them from your catalog, what value is that email list? You sell it to another fake guru and they sell their email list to you. So now you have a new list of people that you can sell your grift to that you know are susceptible to buying a course or a mastermind because they bought your friend's mastermind. And now you just trade off back and forth your email list. That's how you can end up in multiples of these grifts because yes, to your point, Charles, and thank you for calling in, they all hang out with each other. They all do the same thing. All right, let me uh, read some of these comments and we are going to wrap things up. I have a very long weekend and I need to get to rest. So, it, shouts out. Yes, great call from Charles. Holla at Call Camellia. Come, listen, I know you're a longtime supporter of Pocket Watching with JT, but you know Pocket Watching with JT is not the best at pronouncing names. But sister, thank you so much for supporting the show. I absolutely appreciate it. Who we got here? Let's um, <laughs> speak on it. Miss Sweet Talks, thank you so much. Yes, yes, I agree with you. Birds of a feather absolutely flock together. Who else would they hang around with? Who else would they hang around? They got to hang around with each other. Otherwise, you know, the grift gets too, too big. The grift gets way too big. Uh, prosperity preachers, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it, says, it, <laughs> it is magic, ain't it? Yes, it's absolutely magic how they can say some words and move their hands around and all of a sudden the money that was in your pocket or in your bank account is now in their pocket and in their bank account. It is magic. Uh, shouts out to everybody. Uh, big shouts out to Philip Sadiq. Big time supporter, moderator on here, pocket watching with JT. Uh, Sandy girl says that <laughs> that's Grant Cardone's quote. Well, which one is Grant Cardone's quote? I can't remember. I can't remember. But yeah, he absolutely, Grant Cardone, man, to me, he is one of the king of the grifters, man. Grant, I, I, I can't understand how anyone would follow Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone is, I, I, I can't do it. Hey, shouts out. We got the doctor, Dr. Uh, T. Hassan Johnson in the building. Says, shouts out to the pocket watcher. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all go up and check out Dr. T. Hassan Johnson's YouTube channel. Thank you so much, man. He's one of the people who helped me as I grew here uh, on YouTube. I used to be in his chat and he, you know, gave me a shout out and stuff like that. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. We also have Bam Flacco in the building says most victims are gotten from the results of their greed for quick money and commerce. Yes, I say this all the time. I don't care how many times I have to say it. Being a victim of a grift 
or scammer is not an intelligence test. It does not mean you are dumb. It means that that particular scammer on that particular day was able to speak into you something that you desired. And when you have desire for something, logic normally goes out the door. All right. There's three categories in life that you can almost guarantee a person needs and desires at some point in their life. Love, wealth, and health. Love, wealth, and health. If you catch a person at a right time in their life, you can scam them out of almost anything if you're promising them love when they're lonely, wealth when they're broke, health when they're sick. If you can do that, I don't care if this person has the highest IQ in the world, you can hook them because logic goes out the door when you have desire for one of those three things. Uh, let me see here. We got uh, Swiss Horton in the bill. It says, JT, please expose credit scam artists who offer uh, repair services, then push you to apply for credit uh, just to sell you costly mentorships. I'm, I'm not a fan of credit repair services in general anyway. If you are trying to fix your credit simply to be able to get more debt, you got the game backwards. The reason why your credit is bad is because you have bad financial habits. The reason why your credit is bad is because you either borrowed money and did not pay it back, or you got into some debt somehow and you did not pay it back, right? Um, why do you want more money? Why do you want to borrow more money? You have already clearly demonstrated you do not have the ability to borrow money responsibly and pay it back. You, you may say, well, JT, no, 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 JT. I've changed. I'm responsible now. I realize all the faults of my past. I know I played around and I borrowed money and I didn't pay it back, but now I'm a changed man. I'm a changed woman. I can handle borrowing money now. Okay. Well, why don't you pay back all the people you owe? Well, I ain't trying to do that. That's, I mean, I'm not trying to pay those old people back. I'm good now. I'll pay off the new debt, but I don't want to pay all the people who I owe in the past. That shows a lack of character. Think about this. It's a lack of character. I know people who will get into debt and not pay it back because it's not going to hit their credit score. Let me say that again. I know people who will get into debt and not worry about paying it back because this particular form of debt is not going to hit their credit score. You still owe that person. Just because it does not affect your credit score doesn't mean you don't owe them. You have a lack of character. And because of your lack of character, you will have a lack of blessings and achievement in your life. When you decide that I'm going to pay back what I owe, regardless if it hits my credit score, based on the simple fact that I told you I would pay you back. I know it's the right thing to pay you back. And hell, if you would have borrowed money from me, speaking in the third person, you know, if you had someone borrow money from you, you would want them to pay you back. You wouldn't want to hear an excuse from them saying, well, it ain't on my credit score, so why do I have to pay you back? Oh, that's old. That's four years ago. You still tripping off that? Yes. And if you can't mature to the point where you'll say, listen, I'm going to pay them back or offer them settlements. I owe you $1,500 on that bill from five years ago. Will you take $800? Most likely, yeah. And then at least you're making some sort of arrangement to take care of your responsibilities. Many people think that they have an income problem. I live paycheck to paycheck because I don't make enough money. I live paycheck to paycheck because my boss is greedy and he won't give me a raise. I live paycheck to paycheck because of the white man. 
Okay. All right. But when I go through the financial statements of people, when I look through that bank statements, they live paycheck to paycheck because they have a spending problem. Their eyes are bigger than their wallet. They buy things as if they have two times the income that they actually have. The white man don't make you do that. I'm, I've never had a white man tell me to buy a Rolls Royce when I have Chevy money. Never, I've never seen that. I've seen many Negroes on YouTube in music videos all over who promote a rock star, a movie star lifestyle that you are lame if you don't drive a Lambo. You are lame if you can't fly private. I've seen that in my lifetime. I've never seen a white man ridicule me for buying um plain Walmart brand shoes. I've seen a lot of Negroes do it. So, you know, when you decide that your character matters, when you decide that your word matters, when you decide that the values that you claim you uphold matter, you'll be surprised how your financial life changes. Apply all that BS that you say about you love your family, your friends, your faith, all the things that you claim you value. If you imprint that on your financial habits, I bet you you won't live paycheck to paycheck. I bet you you'll find a way to be able to meet your obligations because you put your word out there. But what do I know? I'm just, I, I'm just a pocket watcher. Let me get out of here before I start preaching. Listen, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. It's tax season. I try to give you content when I have time to do it. Uh, I have a new channel. It's Pocket Watcher Ask JT on that channel. All we do are one-on-one -on -one phone calls and questions in the chat where we talk about your, uh, your financial situation. And I do the best I can to give you uh, tips and recommendations to improve your financial life. If you have a financial issue, you have a lot of debt, you can go to the website, pocketwatcher.net. You can enroll in that free finance course that the other caller talked about. Enroll in Pocket Watcher Academy, 100% free. In those videos, in those lessons, I teach you how to create a budget, how to create an emergency savings fund, and how to pay off debt. Go to the website, pocketwatcher.net. Other than that, listen, the Pocket Watcher is out. Hopefully, I'll see you guys next week. Y'all be safe. Do everything you can to avoid wasting money. Money is a resource, something that is limited. When it comes into your hand, think twice. Think three times before you throw it out. All right? Pocket Watch out. Y'all have a great night. Hey, Pocket Watchers. Are you looking for real financial advice? Thornton Advisor Group is here to help. Jason Thornton, certified financial planner, specializes in tax and wealth planning. Are you living paycheck to paycheck with no retirement plan? Do you need help with the IRS? Book your consultation with Thornton Advisor Group to get a financial plan, budgeting, savings, debt management, tax planning, investing, and retirement, even IRS debt settlements. Stop trying to run the play. Get the advice you need to live your best life from a certified financial planner. Book your consultation appointment today. Go to www.thorntonadvisor.com. Hi, I'm Mike Evans with More Money. Tell me, what do you know about More Money? Brother, all I know is I was here last night getting my taxes done, and today, there's more money all the way. You know what I'm saying? And how about you? In here yesterday, back today to get my check. This more money stuff is real. I'm more money for life. I had a slow money? Well, come to more money, because we about that. More money taxes, and once again, it's on, and I got the hookup. <laughs> more money taxes. Come down and see us, and you'll be glad that you did. At Mo Money Taxes, you're more than just another number. This year, we're offering our 30-second refunds to go along with our next day refunds. Come down and see us, and you'll be glad that you did. Continuing saga of Mo Money Taxes. Norfolk police are investigating the tax preparer, and they have alerted the IRS. 
about customers' complaints. Where's my check? That's the question all of these people want answered. The IRS is basically verifying to us that their, our money is here in their bank account. Friday, crowds gathered at Mo Money Taxes in Norfolk. On Granby Street, owner Mario Brady told us he printed 50 checks and 30 did not clear. The banks have refused to cash their checks saying that there is fake. I mean, that is unacceptable. Federal agents raided the headquarters of Mo Money Taxes in Tennessee this morning. You may remember 10 on your side traveled to Memphis for local Mo Money customers who claimed they didn't receive their refund. We continue to follow another developing story. New tonight, tensions continue to run high as customers wait for their tax returns that they say were not getting from Mo Money Taxes. You can see the level of anger just a few hours ago at this Norfolk location off Brambleton. Angry customers who say they were promised refund checks and didn't get them broke windows and police were called to break up the angry crowd. That's just ridiculous. Marcus Eves, a former customer who says he filed his taxes with Mo Money in 2007, is worried about what we recently uncovered behind this Mo Money Tax Services location on Elvis Presley. This is wrong for, you know, files to be out here. This is people's personal information that anybody could have come by and gotten. Investigators are now looking into the discovery of thousands of documents thrown into three dumpsters behind the facility. Shortly after authorities arrived on scene and put up crime scene tape, so did Marky Granberry with Mo Money Taxes. Normally, uh, we would have all files shredded uh, and, and uh, shredded or whatever, but this we don't throw files in the garbage can. I asked him what happened and why the documents were not shredded. Our lease was up on this operation, so I assume the landlord went inside of the location and for whatever reason he decided to throw the files in a dumpster.